Hello again. Today I want to share with you what I did during my college summers that would eventually prepare me to apply and attend graduate school after. I eventually did my PhD in electrical engineering. So if you're planning to go down that academic route where you want to get an advanced degree, uh, this will give you some ideas on what you could be doing during the summers. Of course, I did make time for having fun during the summers and you should too. But in this video, I'm going to focus more on what I did uh, from a career academic standpoint. So I'm going to start off with what I did after my freshman summer. Uh, to be truthful, this summer was actually kind of a wash, as in I didn't really do anything that was directly related to my major or what I wanted to do in the future. So during that first summer, I was actually an intern for Kaiser Permanente's IT department. And what we did during that summer was uh, we're looking at different uh, smartphones and accessories that go with the phones like Bluetooth headsets and devices that would be used by the doctors at Kaiser Permanente. It was a great team and I worked with really great people, but again, it was sort of unrelated to what I wanted to do in the future and I probably could have done something else. So the summer after my sophomore year, I actually worked for a professor at UCSF. It was my first full-time research gig and the way I found it was I applied to a UC Berkeley UCSF joint bioengineering research program where they paired up professors with undergraduates. And so while I was there, I did research on coil design for ultra high field MRI, specifically seven Tesla magnetic resonance imaging. And so I did a lot of uh, electromagnetic wave simulations, EM simulations. So to give some background, seven Tesla is actually a very strong field compared to the field strength of MRI scanners in hospitals, which are usually at 1.5 Tesla or three Tesla. And the reason you're going into higher field MRI, seven Tesla, is that you actually get additional signal to noise ratio Ratio or SNR. While you do get an increase in SNR when you go into higher fields, you also get an increase in the electric field strength and that can cause a patient heating which is something you want to minimize as much as possible. The heating in patients is actually measured by a quantity known as specific absorption rate or SAR. SAR is actually something that cell phone makers have to worry about because when you're holding a cell phone next to your head it's emitting radiation and so you want to minimize uh, the amount of energy that is being deposited in the human head. And there are actually FDA requirements as to the maximum SAR that is allowed for cell phones and also for MRI. So I did do a lot of EM simulations based off of FDTD method, which is a finite difference time domain. And that is a numerical method that is used in a lot of EM solvers. So we do a lot of EM simulations so that we can compare a variety of different coils, such as the birdcage coil, uh, simple surface coil loops, microstrip transmission lines, and we want to be able to find coils that can maximize the amount of B field, which is our signal, and minimize the amount of E field uh, that causes undesired patient heating during an MRI scan. So from our work in looking at SNR, SAR of different coils, uh, we managed to write up one or two abstracts, and I continued to collaborate with that professor during the school year. So the summer after my junior year and before my senior year, uh, I actually worked for a professor at Stanford doing research on very similar work, also ultra high field MRI at seven Tesla and doing a lot of uh, simulations. However, during this particular research experience, I spent a lot more time looking into different numerical methods that are used for EM simulations, such as finite difference time domain, FDTT, and finite element method or FEM. The way I found this particular position is that during the school year, I emailed a couple professors, not many, um, probably two at Berkeley and two at Stanford. And I was basically looking for a research position because I wanted to see what it's like to work in a different lab. One of the professors at Stanford actually forwarded my resume onto one of his colleagues. And that colleague emailed me afterwards asking if I was interested in joining his lab. And the reason he was interested in me is because I had experience from EM simulations that I had the summer before. What he wanted me to do that summer was build up the simulation team for his group uh, since they had no simulation software. And because he's in ultra high field seven Tesla MRI, simulations were very important in understanding and studying uh, B fields and E fields that can cause heating in MRI scans. So a lot of the work I did during the summer after my junior year was built upon what I learned the summer before. And with that professor, I continued to do more uh, studies on MRI hardware, coil design, and from that, we also wrote another abstract the year after. So as you can tell, most of my summers were spent in an academic setting. I think doing a lot of research when I was in college really helped me during my application uh, for graduate school. I think if I could go back and do it all over again, I'd probably try and apply for an internship in industry my freshman year that was a little closer to what I studied as a student. Maybe I could apply for Google or Qualcomm or a company that had work closer to my background. Well, that was my story. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm happy to hear your thoughts. And until next time, see you later.